Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to start our next topic that is collecting information. This topic is actually the continuation of our previous topic that was generating ideas. And I'm going to share the link of the previous lecture in this video also. So in this topic, we are going to discuss mind maps, tables, charts, and lists. First of all, mind map. What is a mind map? It's a diagram that is ideal for brainstorming, planning information, gathering data, presentation, and many other uses. They are a powerful tool because they allow you to think visually, using pictures to solve problems, plan strategies, and to communicate ideas clearly. So in the right-hand side, you can see it's just a picture for mind map. In the center of this picture, you just write your topic and whatever comes to your mind, you just start writing in these gaps. Uh, the next point is why are mind maps effective because they improve our capacity to see the bigger picture and they help us to save time by focusing on key issues. They improve our ability to retain and recall information through patterns and associations and they help to clarify thinking. They provide concise visual information maps that are well suited for presentations and reports. So here you have come to know about one more thing that mind maps are not only used to collect information, but they are also used for presentations and reports. And the next question is how to make a mind map. So the most basic way to create a mind map is with a pen and paper on a whiteboard. Write the subject in the center of the paper, as you can see in this picture. You just write uh, your topic on the real, uh, on the question side, write the subject in the center of your paper and then draw branches that point way away from the center. Each branch symbolizes one thought or idea related to the subject. And you're going to use keywords to put into ideas onto these branches. And as you can see in the picture that one branch can branch off more ideas. So if, when you have this question where, in this question you can make more branches like situation and vision. And similarly, you can make more branches from all other branches. Uh, you can use colors and images as mental triggers for generating more ideas. The next point is tables. Tables are also used for collecting data um, and they are commonly used in collecting and organizing raw data and also for representing final data in a paper. Tables are more effective when you plan to use data in the form of numbers and words to construct argument. Tables present numbers and text in columns and rows to organize raw data. So here in the picture, you can see the components of a table, like uh, for every table, you are going to put a table number, the title of the table, and then there is a table body. And in the footnote, you can add details. So how to draw tables, we are going to repeat the same points here. You can see a sample table in the picture and you just draw the table in the center of the page, put table number for reference and put a descriptive title and label with columns and rows to describe data. And you're going to add footnotes in case you need detailed description of a point. And you may use different colors and images to improve visual clarity of your presentation. Then comes charts. <clears throat> charts or uh, anchor charts are important tools for writers to illustrate ideas. The writers while brainstorming can use charts to make their ideas visible. The recording of ideas and the strategies and processes used by the writers are organized and become presentable through anchor charts. There are several types of charts and graphs like pie charts, bar graphs, etc. And how to make effective charts, you can see in the picture also that charts should be colorful and effective and charts should be clear and easily understood visually. They must have a centralized focus and it's better to use anchor charts or, all, or the charts that you are already familiar with. Charts should be written in academic language. And there is a question for the picture. You can see two charts, chart A and chart B. And my question is, why is chart B more effective than chart A? Obviously, <clears throat> chart B is more effective because you are making the chart visually understandable by using different colors. The last thing is list or listings. List can provide quick effective solutions with little or no modifications. And it can be used to gather data in large group settings or in one-on-one -on -one interviews. Organizations typically use many types of lists, including links, announcements, contacts, issue tracking, and service to name a few. And lists may also include product listings, data tables, or checklists. And you are all familiar with these type of lists. 
So the next point is how to make a list. There are a lot of patterns that have emerged over the time and many excellent examples of their implementation are available. Um, you can have alphabetical sorting in a list, like uh, whenever you have an address book or contact list in your mobile phones, it's normally alphabetically sorted. B, uh, another type is that is contextual sorting and grouping by logically connecting the ideas um, in a list. And then you may use drop down menu or list boxes for creating lists. So here is a short quiz for you. I have put two questions here. The first one is what is the first item entered onto a mind map? What do you think you have four choices and you're going to select one? The next one is which of the following best describes the, what, the, what is the purpose of a data table? And then out of four choices, you are going to select one. Just think about it. So here is an activity and you are going to do this activity. Decide the best method for collecting information for the following. And think about how many students in your class are missing lectures due to connectivity issues.